Good evening. My name is William Barnes, and I will be reciting the inaugural address by John F. Kennedy. We observe today not a victory of party, but a celebration of freedom, symbolizing an end as well as in a beginning, signifying renewal as well as change. For I have sworn before you and almighty God the same solemn oath that our forebears prescribed nearly a century and three quarters ago. The world is very different now, for man holds in his mortal hands the power to abolish all forms of human poverty and all forms of human life. And yet, the same revolutionary beliefs for which our forebears fought are still at issue around the globe. The belief that the rights of man come not from the generosity of the state, but from the hand of God. Let every nation know, whether it wishes us well or ill, that we shall pay any price, bear any burden, support any friend, oppose any foe, in order to assure the survival and success of liberty. To those old allies whose cultural and spiritual origins we share, we pledge the loyalty of faithful friends. United, there is little we cannot do. Divided, there is little we can do. To old allies whose cultural, to those new states whom we welcome to the ranks of the free, we pledge that one form of colonial control shall not have passed away, merely to be replaced by a far more iron tyranny. To those people in the huts and villages across the globe struggling to break the bonds of mass misery, we pledge our best efforts to help them help themselves for whatever period is required. To our sister republics south of our border, we offer a special pledge to convert our good words into good deeds, to assist free men and free governments in casting off the chains of poverty. To that world assembly of sovereign states, the United Nations, we renew our pledge of support to strengthen its shield and the new of the new and the weak, and to enlarge the area in which its writ may run. To those nations who would make themselves our adversary, we offer not a pledge, but a request that both sides begin anew the quest for peace. So let us begin anew, remembering on both sides that civility is not a sign of weakness and sincerity is always subject to proof. Let us never negotiate out of fear, but let us never fear to negotiate. Let both sides, for the first time, formulate serious and precise proposals for the inspection of control of arms and bring the absolute power to destroy other nations under the absolute control of all nations. Let both sides join in creating a new endeavor, not a new balance of power, but a new world of law, where the strong are just, the weak are secure, and the peace is preserved. All this will not be finished in the first hundred days, nor will it be finished in the first thousand days, nor in the life of this administration, nor even perhaps in our lifetime. But let us begin. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. My fellow citizens of the world, ask not what America will do for you, but what, together, we can do for the freedom of man. Thank you.